Manas and muskies, this is the first ever YouTube musky show, streaming show that, that, that I'm doing here. Uh, I gotta tell you, it wasn't actually going to be the first one because it turned out to be my first experience actually trying to use these GoPro things. I didn't have my techie son out there to help me because he busted up his knee. It's me, my dad Tex, and my older brother Dave. None of us know anything about computers or phones. Can't stand them way behind the curve on this kind of thing. But we decided to do it. It was a Sunday afternoon. And in northern Wisconsin, it's basically been raining all the time. I'd ask those guys, you want to go fish? And they said, yeah, we love to go fish, but it's raining too hard. So out of the blue, all of a sudden, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we got a little time left. The rain stops. It starts looking really nice out there. It doesn't completely stop. The clouds are still up, but I'm thinking, hey, this would be a good time to get out there. So away we go. And we got these GoPro cameras we've never tried before. So what you're going to see here is actually not the most professional thing you've ever seen. Uh, no professional cameraman, no professional producers. The audio kind of sucks and this, that, and the other. And I wasn't going to use it, but then I thought, why not use it? I may not. I'm technically inept, so you can't hear it all that well. But we actually caught some fish. We had a good time. And I think there's some lessons here. Now... My techie son, who's a little younger than me, is on his computers all the time. He tells me that it's real important to tell you right now that if you like this YouTube stuff we're doing here, hit the like button, the share button, whatever it is that you, that you like, and spread this stuff. Tell everybody I got a YouTube page and that they ought to come and watch and you ought to keep watching. Well, we're only like 16s. <laughs> hey, really? Must have been this last year's fish. There you go. Got that one after all of us casting. Well, here we go. Here's our first one on film with our GoPro experiment. Ah, he was not. I don't need the net. This fish was literally, this is interesting, I... I thought I was stuck. It was literally right up on the shore. I mean, that was the blade. The blade started spinning and katunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see that. It was right by shore. And there's our sound science bucktail. Now we got to remember that. Oh, stop! So my dad Tex has been doing this fishing thing for a long time and he's like all good fishermen he's good at patterning things pay attention to this kind of stuff we had had i don't know we're out 15 minutes first fish right up against shore tex picks up on it right away it's important to pay attention where fish are located and what they're biting on well, the moral of the story is i suppose we should start trying casting right up along shore Oh, well, that, yeah, I mean, I literally landed in the grass, basically, there. At least with one fish. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. well, there. <laughs> is that what you were saying? There it is, do? right? I think you got, in this particular case, just a little too close. Of course, you know, the water is high as it is, there's an awful lot of cover right close to shore, too. Yeah. Way right in them yeah. trees. You see us here trying to figure out all of you GoPro types. Tex, you're on film now, you probably don't even realize this, but you're on film throwing too far and catching all that grass. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Boy, that's, that is a real tattletale. <laughs> yeah. Here, Tex predicts a fish. A good spot is a good spot. He knew he didn't hit it, and he told me to throw one in there. Bang! Throw one way up in there. Yeah, Ooh, Ooh, there he is, yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> there was one up there. You yeah. were right. You were right. 
Now that's that's calling your shot yeah, there. Yeah. That was pretty good. Could have the cameraman ready for that one. Yeah. There does just seem to be a lot of them about that side. Yeah. Oh, watch out. You are really slow on reaction. <laughs> well, it didn't hit you, but I'm glad it did. <laughs> we got a Tux needs safety glasses. You were way too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that was just a little too late. <laughs> I actually didn't even see it coming. I've seen it got loose. Yeah, it zipped right over your head. Just in case some of you people think that the pros always catch the fish, hook the fish, eh, we don't always. Even pros like Tex can miss fish. You're going to see a couple in a row here, but on a serious note too, something to watch for. The second fish that, or second time Tex misses this fish, it did one of those crazy deals that only muskies can do. I think it literally came up, grabbed a topwater lure, and was coming towards Tex quick enough so that he didn't feel the strike. A lot of you have heard, you gotta wait for the rod to load up before you set the hook with a surface strike. Well, you also gotta watch and be aware because if you see that top water lure underneath the water, something's got it and you wanna be setting the hook. And that's what actually happened here. So none of us are perfect. We all miss fish, but something to watch for with muskies is that they overtake that bait and actually take it under the water coming towards you and you don't even feel them. If you see that bait under the water, you want to set the hook. Ooh. Huh. Boy, he was up there shallow, huh? Oh, yeah. I'm so sure that was a muskie. I'm wondering if that wouldn't have been a bad. Oh, yeah? Well, I wasn't watching. We hadn't had anything happen. I mean, it looked like a pretty big splash up yeah, in there. Yeah. I'll cast it back, see if you'll grab it again. Oh! Be a little quicker on that. He's still coming. I think that he was right there. He followed all the way in. I'll bet you anything. Yeah. 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 There was a pretty major delay there on that one. <laughs> Interesting to see if he does it again. Well, he did come. That was definitely a wake coming on. So that makes me think it was a month. Okay. You know, seeing the wake, I yeah. wouldn't think a bass would do that. I never remember seeing a bass do that. He got away. Yeah. But yeah, now that was right out, out there. It yeah. threw, threw a cast straight out behind it. That was smaller than the one I caught, though. Okay. It used to stick up even farther. Oh, yeah. oh, crap, I just missed one. Did you? Yeah. So this is probably the best part of the whole show right here. You're going to see <laughs> my brother Dave and I as we explore trying to use these goofy GoPro things. Now, most people, especially young kids, I'm sure they'd have it all figured out. But it's, ah, it's just kind of funny, us trying to figure the whole thing out. But now the interesting thing, I gotta tell you a quick thing about Tex. There's not a whole lot of good things about getting old, and Tex will tell you that, he'll agree with that, but one of them is that Tex has never, ever, ever had his own computer and never actually looked at one, tried to figure one out, or a cell phone. Tex is retired now. He's very happy that he's never looked at one and he plans to keep his record intact. I wonder, Pete, could it be something where this just is like saves the last 20 minutes yeah. and if you don't push a thing to save it, maybe that's what it's. 
it means. I think that because I did finally hit mine out of frustration. Yeah, it's on mm. 20 minute interval. Yeah. So I assume it's still recorded. I mean, if that red light's blinking, it should still be. Yeah, it's recording new stuff, but it's probably losing stuff older than 20 yeah. minutes. Or... Yeah, that's what I think. That, well, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. It is what you call the navigation light, or what are the names? Turn them both on one, sir. Well, now there it did come to the original screen again. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to... I, I think I fried it completely is what happened. The problem is now I don't know if I'm unlooping or what I'm... Doing. Stumps. Ooh. I, I will. I, I just turned it off. He got off of one and then on another. I think I'm guessing he's gone. I don't. I don't have any throbbing. That was a little bit bigger. I yeah. think. Oh, he's, ooh, he's ooh, still there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny because he was I had no indication he was still there he's yeah he's wrapped up now that's a bigger fish yeah it's a little bigger fish there in a second here you're going to notice the comment from my older brother Dave he says it's not a crankbait day Patterning is important and pretty amazing at times. What happened to my brother Dave is a mistake a lot of people make. He'd done unbelievably well the last couple times he was out musky fishing on the crankbait, a particular model. He's had confidence in it. Makes sense. Start with it. But the problem is Dave stuck with it the whole time we were out there and the fish were actually moving real well. So that's, that's one thing. No matter how good a particular lure has been, in the past, even if it's the same body of water, same weather, whatever it might be, it can change and it can change fast. This particular day, I was doing better in the back of the boat, without a doubt, on the Sound Science Bucktail, the Rolling Thunder Bucktail. That was getting the absolute most action. Top water was working really well too. My dad Tex was throwing the Livingston Walking Boss too. He, had, he didn't catch anything, but he had at least four strikes on that and tight to the shore. Overall, the fish were real tight to the shore. So that was, in only a three hour period, those were our patterning things. And unfortunately, uh, my brother Dave kind of stuck with the crankbait longer than he should have. No, it's definitely not a crankbait. The beat's done the best in the back of the boat. Yeah. He's hooked in the yeah, low and go. Bucktails, it seems like I heard the ever catch. Yeah, I was just going to say. Well, I guess I could give you some sound science bucktails. Ah, well, maybe. Hang on to that for a second. I don't know how many fish that accounts for today, but actually it's getting to be quite a few muskies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's the way to do it, I guess. I didn't get a very good picture, I don't think. But. Well, I guess we could end on that note. That would be a... Too bad we're not doing a TV show. Correct? Yeah. We could really get going here. Yeah, you're right. Oh, speaking of that, we got to save this segment. We caught a fish. Tex. Tex was in the background. Stumps were in the back. Yeah, we, you're on. You're on camera. I know you're used to seeing the cameraman, but here he is, folks. Oh yeah, you can. You can see him. No doubt about it. <laughs> By the way, you should have dressed up a little more than you did. Well, I didn't know I was going out with you guys, Pete. If I would, I, I would have dressed up. Had I yeah. known that. That's kind of a dirty Miller High Life hat. Frankly, you could have well, put on a little newer one. Yeah. I didn't wash my hands before I drank the Millers. 
<laughs> That'll do it every time. Never do that with a blaze orange Miller hat. Lessons from Tex. More lessons from Tex. Okay, here we go. We shut this so how about those manas, huh? I mean, we gotta be about the best dressed family out there. And you can see Tex here. You can see where I learned it. He is just amazing with his dress. But anyway, right after this particular fish, we quit. Now, a little tip here. Well, two tips. Two very valuable tips here. The fish were still biting. There was a little storm rolling in. Everything was perfect. You, you want to get out when it looks good, even if it's a brief period, if you can. And you never quit until the fish stop biting. Well, we actually quit right here when the fish were still biting, which isn't a real good idea. However, I want to make this plain. Tex likes his cocktail hour. He likes beer 30. We had pushed 40 minutes past beer 30. And I'll tell you what about Tex, I got a lot of respect for him. He taught me a lot. And when you get 40 minutes extra out of Tex from beer 30 and Tex wants to quit, you quit.